Hi, everyone. This is Kate Nelson. I'm an assistant professor in geography and geospatial sciences at Kansas State University, and I'm leading the socioeconomic and community resilience component of the SafeCop project. Today, graduate student Denise Reyes and I will be giving an update on our recent work. If you have any feedback or questions, please let us know. To complement the water quality and agricultural work being done on Project SafeCon, we are examining how climate impacts on water and agriculture ultimately trickled down to influence the socioeconomic character and overall resilience of the linked social ecological system that comprise rural agricultural communities. Our goal is to be able to estimate the potential impacts of climate change and agricultural adaptations on future communities. One of our major focuses has been on developing a framework for characterizing the resilience of the watershed and assessing the validity of this framework. To that end, uh, we have referred to literature on agricultural vulnerability, resilience, sustainability, and adaptive capacity to identify potential driving factors of resilience. Variables that relate to different forms of physical, social, and economic capital, such as agrochemical inputs, health insurance coverage, and poverty rates are common in the literature. To this starting list of factors, uh, 31 factors, we've begun adding other factors that were identified as key components of the watershed by you during our advisory group meeting last fall. So you may recall the system map that I drew in real time. Well, Denise, who will follow me with additional updates, was able to code the transcript from our meeting to systematically develop a network diagram of all the factors and interrelationships that you mentioned during that meeting. From this, we've been able to identify additional stakeholders to reach out to, to fill existing gaps in, uh, in interest and expertise, uh, as well as identify additional factors and metrics, such as extreme heat days as a measure of human health risks and climate extremes um, that will add to our final community resilience framework. Hi, my name is Denise, and I'm working with Dr. Nelson to build a model of resilience that provides a resilience score for different census tracts in the state of Kansas, and examine the consistency and validity of this model. We started by collecting data. So the socioeconomic variables were collected from the American Community Survey, the five-year estimates, county level gross domestic products, as well as healthcare providers, at a county level, were collected from the BAE or the Bureau of Economic Analysis, and agricultural variables were selected or collected from the USDA or the United States Department of Agriculture. The variables I collected were from 2010 to 2022. I merged clean and transformed the data so that diverse measures such as yield and poverty rate could be compared and combined. Now, a popular method of constructing the resilience indexes um, tend to combine things that being vectors, variables, and the like using addition. This is also known as linear combinations. So that's what we did. We created four different measures using linear combinations. We combined capitals, so social, economic, and physical capitals were combined. In another method, we added 31 variables. In another one, we decided to use uh, dimension reduction techniques. So we use principal component analysis. We use three components that explain 52% of the variance of our data set, as well as factor analysis, where we also use three factors that explain 47% of the variance in our data set. From there, we wanted to identify which variables were consistently important across the four resilience metrics. So we use regression analysis. Each score was used as dependent variables, so our Ys, in a random forest regression analysis, where the 31 variables that we had used to create the metrics were used as our independent variables or our Xs. We found, found the variables that influenced the score the most were upper income of the population, population in SNAP, 
Family is below the poverty line and agricultural production expenses, where we think that all fertile income increases resilience, population on SNAP decreases resilience, families below the poverty line decrease re resilience, and agricultural production expenses increases resilience. We must note that, that, that these are preliminary results just based on secondary data on agriculture, economics, and population demographics. Your input is valuable in understanding how agricultural and water resources affect our community resilience. Thank you so much.